Welcome back, Hampshire Chemistry students. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at not just a meme, but also trying to understand the goal of that I can explain the difference between acids, bases, and salts. All right, so let's hit some of this big important vocab here together and make sure that we understand what each of these different important ideas mean. Starting off with acids. Okay. Acids are very simply a chemical that creates an H plus ion during a reaction. Okay. There are lots of different types of acids and we should know already that they are distinguished very easily by having the H in the front of their formula. And when you're reading out their names, this is hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, high of, this is phosphate, phosphoric acid, excuse me. Okay. These all have acids in their names, so they're usually really easy to pick out. Okay. Bases are also pretty easy to find in a chemical formula. Okay. They are chemicals that create an OH- minus during, during a reaction. Okay. You'll usually see that OH- minus in the formula. Okay. Now, most of the time they will have the OH, but some bases are a little bit harder to identify because you don't always see the OH. So NH3, when it reacts with water, will actually make the OH-. minus. All right. Now, there is one more key vocab term when you talk about acids and bases, and that is the chemical salt. And right. now we all know what salt is, like, duh. It's just NaCl. I put it on my french fries all the time. Whoa, whoa, sorry. Sorry, that was Mr. Bartlett's basic self popping out there. Right. The actual chemistry definition for salt is any combination of a metal cation and a non-metal anion. It's basically an ionic compound. So magnesium and fluorine, metal and nonmetal, potassium and nitrate, polyatomics are nonmetals. Here's iron 3 chloride, and of course NaCl, table salt, would also count as a salt itself. Okay. You can find a lot of different kinds of uh, acids and bases in different types of samples. Okay. For example, okay, I can pull up some cherry limeade. Uh, um, drink mix. Okay, I drink this uh, in order to help stop myself present, uh, stop drinking as much soda. And if I look at the ingredients list of these kinds of foods, especially things with like fruity flavors, once it decides to focus, come on. Come on, buddy. There we go. Now you can see that we have things like citric acid, right? Citric acid is formed for the polyatomic ion citrate. It's a little more complicated than we get to in chemistry, but it is a very common acid. Now you can find other things like ascorbic acid on lots of different types of foods, as well as, hey, look down here, I've got some things like calcium silicate. Calcium is a metal, and if you Google it, silicate is also a nonmetal. That's a that is a salt right there. You can see another salt with magnesium oxide also being present. Hey, right, let's take a look. Let's take a look at a couple other different examples. Hey, right, so for example, I've got some breadcrumbs here. Hey. Right. I was making some meatballs earlier. Uh, if you look at these ingredients, there's a lot of stuff on here. Uh, but you can find a lot of different things. We see some acids like folic acid, and you see a bunch of other different uh, salts here as well. Ammonium sulfate, calcium sulfate, monocalcium phosphate, uh, lots of different things. Potassium sorbate. These, those are all examples of salts. Now you might be wondering, where would you go to find some bases? Well, a lot of bases can be found in some very common cleaning products. Uh, here is some dishwasher detergent that I had in my house. Uh, you can look on a lot of these ingredients and you will find some common bases. Uh, come on, buddy. I promise they're on here once my camera decides to focus. Uh -huh. oh, 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 there it goes. So. Like, look at that, sodium hydroxide, uh, as well as sodium carbonate. Hydroxide has that OH minus. Uh, carbonate is also another example of something that can create an OH minus in a reaction. Uh, so you can find a lot of different common acids and bases all around your house. Uh, so how do we measure the different amounts of acidity, right? Because I'm not gonna be drinking my dishwasher soap like I would wanna drink my cherry limeade here. Uh, and that's where we measure things, we measure the acidity of things. For example, we use, what we use to measure the acidity of things is pH. 
A pH scale is probably something you've heard about before, and it measures the relative acidity of a solution. Now you can also talk about the basicity of a solution, that's called a pOH. Hey, we'll talk more about that coming up in a little bit. Right now, let's focus on this idea of pH, though. And I want to talk about the pH scale. Hey, the pH scale is, again, something you might have heard of before. Hey, but it's a range of acidity from 1 to 14. Hey, things that are neutral are at the very middle of this scale. So at pH of 7, this is where you have something that is neutral. Uh, the most common example of a neutral compound would be water. Now, anything that is lower than pH of 7, so from 1 to just below 7, these guys are your acids. Whereas anything above pH 7 are going to be your bases. So for some different common examples, hey, just to hit up a few, when we look at acids, hey, some common examples of some acids, when you're at a pH of two, this is like the pH of a lemon or a lime or other citruses hey, that we can find in fruits. If you want to find something that's a little bit less acidic, even though it's a higher number, right? If you're closer to neutral, that means you are less acidic. Okay? So things like coffee are around 5 pH. Okay? Now, bases, okay? some common examples of some bases, something that is not super acidic, but uh, are, excuse me, not super acidic, but not very basic, would be examples of things like blood. Okay, blood has a pH about a pH of 8, so it's slightly more basic than normal water. Whereas when you look at something like soap, okay, soap is going to have a pH of around 10. Okay, that'll be more basic as an example. All right, now when we look at these numbers, okay, like the one, 7 to 8 here, pH is a logarithmic scale. So a if I am at pH 7 and then I go to pH 8, that is a change of times 10. Blood is times 10 more basic than water. If I do something like the uh, neutral water to coffee, that is 2 times 10s. So that is times 100 altogether. So coffee is 10 times more acidic than water. You can even take this even further, times 10 times 100 times 1,000, times 10,000, times 100,000. Uh, that 100, the lemon juice is gonna be 100,000 times more acidic than normal water. And as part of your, your learning today, you're gonna be taking a look at some different, more examples of things on the pH scale and how they all fit into place. I hope that this makes sense here. If you have any questions, don't forget to communicate and ask questions. For right now though, guys, I'll see you in the next video.